Hello, everyone. Welcome to the McMaster Health Forum here at uh, McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, for our latest Queen Elizabeth Scholarship presentations. Uh, here's a quick agenda. If I can get the thing to advance, there it is. A quick agenda for today's presentations. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the forum, a little bit about our scholarship program, and then I'll introduce you to our uh, scholar presenters. If you're watching this later on YouTube, the two scholar presenters will be divided into two individual recordings. The Master Health Forum uh, aims to be a leading hub for improving health outcomes through collective problem solving. We harness information, convene stakeholders, and prepare action-oriented leaders to act as an agent of change by empowering stakeholders. The Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program is formally referred to as the Canadian Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Scholarship, and it's managed by uh, Universities Canada, the Rita Hall Foundation, Community Foundations of Canada, and Canadian University. This program is made possible with financial support from the Government of Canada, provincial governments, and the private sector. The main purpose of the scholarship program is to uh, activate a dynamic community of young global leaders to create lasting impacts both at home and abroad through cross-cultural exchanges, encompassing international education, discovery and inquiry, and professional experiences. Here at the McMaster Health Forum, we've been lucky to have two different Queen Elizabeth Scholarship programs. Our second program, from which our two scholars come to today, uh, we are very proud to have been selected as one of 20 Canadian institutions for a second round of scholars. Uh, it began in 2018. Uh, it was originally supposed to run to the end of 2021, but we were given an extension for obvious reasons to 2023. Uh, the focus of this current version of the scholarship program here at the forum is called Strengthening Health and Social Systems. Our scholars will contribute to strengthening health and social systems, become part of our large and growing network of health and social system leaders. This uh, On the screen now, you'll see a, the, a number of scholars from our previous scholarship program. Uh, we had 14 incoming scholars and we had three outgoing scholars and that program had 44 outgoing interns, all of whom are listed on the screen there. In terms of our current Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program, we've had seven incoming scholars, and you're gonna hear from one of them today, and we've had 24 outgoing interns. Our scholar presenter today is Chris Jan, who during the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program was a PhD student in the Health Policy Program at McMaster University under the supervision of Dr. John Levis. Chris Jan came to us from Chile, where he was an industrial engineer with a master's degree, uh, where his main research was to create a management model to improve primary health care services. During his time in Canada as a graduate student, he had hoped to use the, the McMaster and Queen Elizabeth Scholarship platforms to take his competencies related to evidence-informed policymaking to the next level, allowing him to make deeper and stronger contributions to this field. And I'm pleased to say that he is a recent graduate of the PhD program and is now Dr. Christian Manzilla. So, Christian, over to you. Thank you, James. Am I loud enough? Thanks. So. Yeah, all right. Uh, no, thank you. I think uh, I, I have like this pleasure to just like be presenting my experience here in Canada and how it was like for me to just like coming to Canada to just like do my studies of, of PhD, right? So the the agenda that I'm planning to cover just like be like give a bit of a background of like where I come from, right? Like my, my original country and then like about like a, where, I, where I was before coming here to Canada and just like going through what I lived. What I, what I was just here in Canada, uh, my PhD, what happened like during the pandemic, right? <laughs> that, uh, and then like also kind of like the, the personal life that I just like built here, that it was just also an important part of my experience to, uh, here too, right? Um, and then like I would just briefly talk about like what's next, what I feel from my future uh, after just like um, having this experience. So let's start by like where I come from. Um, my country is called Chile. Chile is a, a country in the southern hemisphere that is just like uh, known for many many things, um, and it, it's in the, in the at the at the very south part of South America, as you can see in the in the in the map. Um, <clears throat> and being in the southern hemisphere means a lot of things that like, we I encounter many people that is often like very uh, strange to live. So uh, that means that like we are living exactly the the opposite season every single time, right? So like well. We are just like in, a, in like a falling leaves here in Canada. Like we have like blossoming flowers there, um, and we have like summer Christmas too. 
And then we also have um, uh, like funny facts, like like the toilets would flush to the other side. But <laughs> uh, uh, and it's a long country. So as long as United States and Canada together, as you can see in the graph on the left, and as wide as Canada, right? So if we would just like place. So it's a long country, so long that we often in school just like study the map that like when we study geography in the map that is split in two or sometimes three, right? Because it's just like very long to, to cover, right? Um, and there are many things in which we kind of like know Chile. So I wanted to just like ask you like, like what do you come to your mind that when you just like hear about Chile? I mean, don't say me, but. <laughs> it's hot. Yes? Is it warm? Warm, okay. Uh, not, I mean, it's a long country. So like I think in the, in the very north is warm, right? But in the very south is cold too. It could be, but anything that comes to your mind, like, well, or anyone online that would like to, <laughs> to say something in the chat. So this is like, I, I try to ask this, like every time that I need to present about Chile, and these are the common answers that I receive. So the soccer team. Many people know the soccer team. Like many people, even if they are not like into soccer, earthquakes too, right? Like so, Chile is a very earth, like a country that lives like a lot of earthquakes, and we are very used to it, right? To to live that. This is also from Chile, Easter Island. So um, Easter Island is a, it's an island that is part part of the Oceania continent, like to be honest, and and but it just like got like these particular kind of like figures that were um, built like many years ago, like by the indigenous people living there. But it, but because it's a very long country, it shares like beautiful landscape that got the, that goes from the, the the driest desert on earth, in the very north, that is in the left picture, to the very, very south of Patagonia, which is like a, a very humid and very different in terms of like weather and, and, and landscape, right? As you can see in the figure. Um, so this is like much like about like my my origins, and then uh, if I can briefly tell like where I was before I was coming to Canada, this is like a bit of my background. So I'm an industrial engineer as training. That means that it's a mix between, uh, let's say, economy, business, and management. So I studied that like in that university in the. Catholic University of Chile, that is just like the logo is there. And I did like a master's of science in engineering. And early on, I just like started to, to be interested by public health issues. So I just like looked to do my my master's thesis in like working with some people in public health, like in, in primary health care. And then I, I jumped in my early days um, to work on monitoring and evaluation. And I worked there in a hospital that is owned by Christus Health, which is like a large company uh, based in the U.S. that is also like a, um, a health provider back there uh, that is also operating in Chile. And, and later, I just worked in Unitaid, which is, which is an international organization based in Geneva that works on uh, facilitating diagnostics and treatment for HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis. Uh, but and always in M&E, right? And then I just uh, went back to Chile to as a public servant at the Ministry of Health, and where I just basically founded and led for a, led for a number of years an evidence informed decision making unit that had like a very similar work that that the one that we do here at the forum. So it's just responding to decision making needs by many types of products, some of them rapid evidence synthesis, evidence preferred policy, policy dialogues, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So this was me like before coming to, to Canada, right? So now while in Canada, what I did here, so I traveled all the way north. So, which is funny because like, it's just like a straight north, like from Chile to, to, to Hamilton. And, and so I came just like to do my PhD here uh, at, uh, in health policy and and I'm glad to just like have it done like uh, inside the health forum right because I just like work on two critical aspects of the decision making of the evidence support system story which is like how to connect decision makers questions with the right form of evidence and in the other side like to kind of like clarify and support the role of living evidence synthesis for for decision making so um, I was able to to work in 
through these four years in in this topic and 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 I'm very grateful to just like have had like this experience in my in my life in in professionally speaking right but I also feel like I kind of like um moved from Santiago which is a big city to a relatively small city that is Hamilton and I'm and I feel like like Hamilton was like my home for four years and and I just like have like some like interesting pictures of one of the three most beautiful places of Hamilton that I think well like James you have lived like a life here in Hamilton but like these are one of the three most beautiful places that I that I feel very Hamilton you must recognize them right or you must recognize them right any of them do you recognize them at all or no if you have lived in Hamilton it's <laughs> All right. So the left one is Sanders Peak, the middle one is Tiffany Falls, and then the right one is Princess Point. Right. So I used to live like very close to Princess Point. So I remember I did have God go a lot there, right? To just like travel and just like walk, especially in the summer, but even in the winter too. It's just like a beautiful place to to hang out and just like and it was particularly relevant during the pandemic, right? But it was also like, I mean, I came to Canada with a family too, right? So like the picture on the left is a picture of my daughter when she arrived here and we need to just like find her daycare, right? So this is the daycare for McMaster where she just like started there. And I would just take a bike with her like all over Hamilton, essentially everything that I would just did. So these are uh, pictures of my, when I just arrived with bike in 2019. And then we had uh, this right that, that we all live and I have to say I had like a hard time kind of like remembering like my experiences during the pandemic because it was such a hard time especially for people that that like are not from uh, here right like so like, you don't have a family you don't have like many friends and then you can see anyone you can just like go back to Canada so we stay here for two full years that we couldn't leave the country because we didn't know if we would be able to just like go back right and and uh, yeah, and, and this was a hard time that like sometimes I feel we somehow um, said that I feel that sometimes we uh, kind of like forget how it was and, and how difficult uh, it was that well, even like now, like, I just didn't recognize you, Ariana, because like, you will always just like meet with a mask. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but like also COVID for me, like um, was a... Uh, it was an interesting opportunity for my professional life because I was able to just like get like an interesting work and role in Covident, right? So Covident was like this network of um of of or organizations, leaders in in evidence synthesis, technology assessment, and guideline production that like went together um, to kind of like move the evidence ecosystem to a a, a better place and how to just like uh, make make this stronger for. For the for the evolving world that the COVID like implied like in the in the very beginnings, right? So here I was able to just like participate and be the editor of the COVID and inventory of evidence synthesis that like has evolved so much from the early days now, but it's essentially a repository of all evidence synthesis that were produced and are produced still like for the response of the COVID nineteen pandemic, and we we'll just like place them and select w which one are best based on the recency, the quality, and their availability of great profile right um, and I, but I also participated in the hub of hubs which is the, was an initiative that was co-led by the Africa Center for Evidence back there um, and and this was an initiative essentially to just like build a repository of different organizations that provide some type of COVID-19 knowledge and we will structure them around the type of outputs that they could produce and around the sector that they would just like um, be using um, but this, uh, but to me, like COVID and just like working here in Canada was like a, a remarkable opportunity for me to kind of like get engaged in many other projects beside my PhD too, right? So <clears throat> these are some examples. One is just like the, the, the evidence to policy summit that was the, the first one was just like um, uh, happened back in 2021. I was able to also kind of like coordinate their like uh, different groups and different uh, the organization of the event that was like fully online. Uh, but I also kind of like participated in the evidence commission in many initiatives, some some of them still ongoing, such as the rapid evidence support system assessment that I'm conducting back in Chile that is just to measuring the or just like to documenting the state of of the evidence support system back there in in in, in Chile, right? Uh, and then, like on the right, you have like the graph of my number of citations, so you could see how how 
how uh, the, the impact that Canada and the COVID-19 pandemic itself like, has like in my kind of like um, research life too, right? So I had like very limited citations back in 2018 and 2019. And then like I jumped, like it jumped like really a lot like during 2020 and 2021, which is also kind of like um, somehow like the, the other side of the coin, like for many things uh, on the COVID-19 pandemic, right? So this is one of the main outputs of my thesis too, that was also, that I consider is it's one of the key outputs of my stage, uh, of my uh, life here in Canada, right? It's just, uh, so it's um, it's essentially a tool that like, that will help identify a decision-making need into a specific type of question, right? Acknowledging that like the decision-making needs could like be a variety of different issues and could just like address different questions, right? So uh, this tool could facilitate people kind of like receiving decision-making needs to needs to kind of like map that into a specific type of question and from that type of question to assign the specific form of evidence or study design that could better or more suitably address that specific need. Um, so I'm reached to the end, but I want to say that like for, uh, for my life in Canada, I think like... Um, Friends were also my family, and I was also like a a, a nice opportunity that I treasure uh, for uh, definitely like for for my life here. So I'm just like, showing some pictures of some friends and my family after like convocating a couple of <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. Um, so what's next uh, to just like finish this presentation? I need to work a bit more on the tool that I created out of my thesis and how I can just like make it like um, useful. A, a tool to make and connect decision maker needs with the different forms of evidence and kind of like help people working in actual work uh, that they, they will um, support decision making. But I also kind of like taking like different roles at Evidence Aid, for example, which is an international charity based in the UK that is working basically on providing evidence summaries from systematic reviews. Another uh, international organization which I'm consulting, such as uh, the ones that you see there, but I'm currently working with UNDP, for example, in a synthesis of evaluations studies. So like all the evaluations of UNDP projects are being summarized in like uh, from the Caribbean, and also from the Asia Pacific and also on that with WHO on, on, on the role of living evidence synthesis also on living guidance for, for, for policy making processes in general. Gracias. Thank you for your for your time and